if we can start with a bit of background. So you're obviously a successful businesswoman, but how did you get into the fishing industry? Well, but my husband um, is always, the, he comes from a big fishing family. My father was a fisherman. And um, once we, you know, well, my husband had a big factory. He employed over 100 people. And in the oh, really? 90s, it just started to go down and down, lack of fish. Mm. And um, he, the Dutch, we kind of think the Dutch bought him out because yeah. they wanted to close it. Because oh, he, really? the, yeah, his factory was the biggest UK place producer um, oh, right. in, the, so, in the country. Get rid of the so, country. Well, we had to act quickly. So he said to me one day, you were going to have to buy something. And I said, you're kidding me. So I went out and bought a few fish markets. <clears> and then I started chatting to, I was in the, in the canteen down the fish market one day. And a gentleman said, who's she? And he had the fish auction is. And about 20, that was about 20 years ago and said, um, who is she? You know, she's, she seems all right. Because he didn't want to sell the auction to a fisherman or a fish mar a merchant because what oh. either one would have the monopoly so i bought her and um sort of it's kept going and I've, I've gradually i've seen the decline um yeah. and as, and as we well know i you know i held on tight for brexit got yeah. brexit all excited bang yeah you know our aspirations and opportunities were destroyed overnight again after 40 years of waiting and what what made you campaign for so i was a vote leave coordinator as well and, and we were always banging on about we're going to take back control of our fishing. We're going to, you know, take it back from the French. We're going to steal back our mackerel from Macron. Um, what did, why did you actually campaign to leave the EU? Because, because I just watched a, a fish market in Lowestoft. We were one of the biggest fish markets in the, in the, in the, in the world, I think, at one time. We went from 300 boats down to, we've got 10. Mm -hmm. um, and it was the, the writing was there, you know, that the EU had destroyed it, the common fisheries policy, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, at the time, Jay, I campaigned for Lowestoft, really. I think um, we're a deprived coastal area. I've got connections in Fleetwood. They are too. Obviously, I talk to different fishermen all around the country. Mm. Um, and coastal communities, once you take out a natural resource, they're over. Yeah. And so what do you replace that with? With the great wind farms? Mm. Well, the, the majority of wind farms, I mean, I've got, I work on the, the, um, on the fish market, we have Scottish power. Well, that's owned by the Spanish. Yeah. And I can assure you the majority of the jobs do go to the, uh, to the EU. You've got yeah. the Danes and the Germans there. Yeah, obviously you have a, a, some um, UK people working um, in the industry, but not all these thousands of jobs that they they try and, and and fabricate that's that's definitely not true and the other thing with the wind farms situation it's six months left it's no different to pick and sprouts yeah you know during the winter time it's quiet it's now picking up it's, now it's seasonal work isn't it it is seasonal work um so i campaigned with you know um i was a big i was a conservative i was a tory i worked very very hard with my mp in Lowestoft to get him his seat he was my friend yeah. And then once through, you know, once we left, I thought, here we go. And I could gradually see, oh, yeah. dear, what's happening, you know, with, with uh, Theresa May and the awful yeah. deal that she was conjuring she up. She was an absolute nightmare, wasn't she? She was just oh, it's doing dreadful. everything yeah. she could to, I, I think, I, I personally even wonder if she called an early election to try and get out of having to deliver Brexit at all, uh, because she ran an awful campaign, lost loads of seats, you know, we mm. even lost our seat in Peterborough. Um, it went over to Labour. Just seemed really dodgy, uh, and it, it wouldn't have been Brexit at all. So <clears throat> we all know you became an MP, MEP, sorry, um, yep. the Brexit party when the Brexit party yeah. did amazingly in the 2019 European parliamentary elections. Did obviously you had expectations going into the European Parliament? You knew about the EU, but what was mm. it actually like when you got into that? You know, into that role, and how did you find EU bureaucracy? and their whole democratic process? Well, Jay, as you can imagine, I, I'm not, you know, I, I've campaigned and lobbied for different things and I run a business, but to be overnight become a politician and work with people like Anne Whittacombe, a Claire Fox, it was like, I was like the rabbit in the headlights. <laughs> but I quickly, I quickly realised, you know, this politician game's not that hard. Once you, you know, once you, because at the end of the day, it, to me, I tell I was telling the truth, so I really couldn't fail. 
I was you know, gonna say, I think that's what people warmed to you over is that you you came across you obviously said the right things you said it with passion but you you seemed less of a cardboard cutout politician you know you, you weren't this sort of um stupidly finely polished you know when you look at them and think well you, you know you're saying the right things but it doesn't come across as genuine you don't seem real whereas you seemed you knew what you were talking about and you actually felt it um but no, oh, thank you. Um, so I quick, quickly cottoned on to it and um, I had some really good people behind me. I mean, Nigel Farage for one. Yeah. He, um, he, I, I think with Nigel, he, I often look back at it now and think he trusted me, Jay. That was a big yeah. deal for me. Yeah. You know, I don't think anyone's really, obviously people have trusted me in my life, but to actually sort of just put, I, you know, I launched the Brexit party. I was yeah. with Ben Habib in Coventry. And I'm like, you know, to trust someone who, you know, he'd obviously campaigned a little bit with me. Yeah. So I think that gave me a kick. And I got into the PESH committee and I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> because I can tell you that lot in the EU didn't know what they were talking about. You know, they, exactly. they, they really yeah. didn't have a clue about a lot. So I kind of, and my job was to get, to go to, um, to Parliament and get us out. You know, yeah. that's what we were there to do. Yeah. And, um, you know, the first few weeks was difficult, but gradually they warmed to me, actually, in the PESH committee. I had a dear friend who sat with me a lot, which was Robert Rowland, who unfortunately we lost. Yeah. God bless him. Yeah. Um, and he was... And I, I did have the support from people like um, Robert, um, Claire Fox, huge friend of mine. You know, they were all behind me. And then and um, we did well. Yeah, as, as we did very well. You know. yeah, yeah, no, definitely. And... What was the actual, how did you find the approach? So was it democratic? So we were constantly pushing through, hammering at home during the Leave co campaign that, you know, there was a lack of democracy in the e EU Parliament. Did you actually witness that firsthand? Was it yeah. as bad as you thought? Yeah, it yeah. was definitely bad. And especially in the PESH committee, because really when you look, when I look back, the Dutch ruled the roost there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, it, you know, we were right to leave. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad we've left. I'm have to make that very clear because as you can imagine, um, in my opinion, we have Brino, yeah. Brexit in yeah. name only. Um, so I do get quite a lot of um, a boost from from Remainers. You know, you didn't know what you were voting for. The same, yeah. you know, the same old crap. Well, that, that's what I mean. Like you, you obviously do. You find it frustrating that you did all that hard work. Um, mm. You put a lot of pressure on the government. Um, without the Bre Brexit party and, and MEPs like yourself, mm. we would have ended up with um, perhaps even it being scrapped. You know, I know that's a drastic. Thing, but it's not it's not um unforeseeable considering how much was going against us and Theresa May like you said is, is, was just a, a, a complete waste of time um are you not frustrated though that you did all that work you put all that graft in and then you didn't get a final say you didn't have an input into the final deal that was delivered I'm devastated I'm still not over it I yeah. couldn't after we left and um the deal come through I read it and then Ben Habib read it. Um, yeah. Brett and Ben is very, very clever, you know, and he knew, he, yeah. he, he knew. I was devastated. And then what happened, I tried to explain to people how bad it was. And yeah. even people that voted to leave started to say, oh, come on, June, it's not all that bad. So that hurt me yeah. because there was, there was people, a lot of people actually, Jay, that were right behind me because they, they wanted, to, they needed fishing yeah. to get Brexit. Of course. And, so I then started to realise, well, hang on a minute, did you actually really care about the industry? And I'm talking about people, you know, who, who wanted to leave. Um, and I'm still not over it. I mean, it's just, it's, it's getting worse. I yeah. mean, I don't think the great British public realise just how bad that deal is. It is absolutely horrendous for what, what is fishing. It about, what is it about the deal that you don't like? Obviously, so with regards to fishing and, and to other aspects of it you know I, I know you mentioned Brino for people watching you don't know that's obviously mm. Brexit in name only but yes um, yeah I, and you've been strong you've been very outspoken about that you even I, I wrote it down you, you mentioned you called the fishing and trade dealers diabolical which is, is. Some words. And, and you're to be fair I keep telling people you are the person who obviously knows most about it you know you've, you've got the in, insight like you say a lot of politicians they haven't got a clue about the industries and the, the issues they're talking about but you actually can tell how it's affecting the fishing industry. So when you saw that deal, what's actually wrong with the fishing deal for people who don't? Well, first of all, we haven't taken back full control of our waters. 80% of the fish that the EU catches comes from our waters. 
Mm. Nothing has changed whatsoever. In mm. fact, it's getting worse because we now have, um, well, we have 1,700 EU vessels in our water, mm. um, helping themselves really, not being policed, eight of which are super trawlers, which are these huge, gigantic killer machines. Mm. Um, I've kind of changed, obviously I'm, I'm desperate to rebuild the UK fishing industry. I mean, yeah. that, is, that has always been my mission. But along the way, I've realised that we really are hammering our ocean and yeah. we're interfering with Mother Nature. Now that worries me. Well, I'm um, glad you said that. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. That is something that I was going to get onto, you know, if Brexit was going to have a positive impact on the environment. Because let's be honest, there's a lot of... Um, so conservative voices, right wing voices, I get hammered. If I talk about the environment, suddenly I'm a, I'm a massive Marxist or a communist, I'm far left, I'm whatever, you know, they don't like to talk about the environment. But it's, it's something that we need to talk about. And especially, like you say, with, with the fishing industry and, and with our oceans. Um, we, well, you've, you only, you've only got to look at oceans across the world. They're being depleted of fish. The marine yes. life, etc. Yeah. being devastated. It isn't sustainable whatsoever. Do you, no. what, what would you do? So what would you do with the deal? If, if you had the chance to have had input into that deal, um, how would you have changed it to, one, to impact, um, to help the environment, but also to improve on sustainability, to try and push, push um, sustainability in fishing? Well, I lobbied very hard for the electric pulse fishing off the East Coast where I live. Yeah. Um, it, was a, it was a trial that lasted for 10 years and that was just allowed to keep ticking over with the Dutch. Nobody mm. intervened. It was all to do with the fuel costs. That's why they tried the electric pulse. Um, I would say there's only myself, uh, my colleague Paul Lines, and one other really that pushed for to ban pulse fishing. And in the end, we we worked with a tremendous NGO called Bloom, French company, fantastic, and got it banned eventually. Yeah. In my opinion, Jay, I think we're too late. The sole stocks yeah. off the east coast. There's nothing there. Yeah. Now if we're if we're looking at a grand bank situation, which happened in Canada, mm. where big consortium of biz, big business, big fishing businesses just depleted their cod stocks. Yeah. So I'm, I'm in the process now of working with CFAS yeah. to um, look at the sole stocks. We're going to work together. They've asked me to help them raise the money. I mean, what's all that about? <laughs> this is see fast asking me you know so have i now got to go to the minister what i'd have done is <laughs> i'm now going to really what would i have done i'd have left i yeah, would yeah. just said goodbye adios yeah. we're off i'm the same exactly yeah, yeah. what iceland did to us what did yeah. iceland say right out 200 miles we want it back yeah and people say oh my god you can't do that you can't do that where will we sell off where will you sell your fish if we take it all back well, we sent to them. Yeah. When we, when, when the, when, when the Icelandic, when the ice, when Iceland kicked the UK out of their waters, within two weeks, Jay, we were buying from them. Do you know why? Because on the Humber, there was thousands and thousands of processing jobs that needed that raw material. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's no different. Supply and demand, isn't it? That, this is what annoyed me. It, it, Mainers. It was, you know, suddenly it, it's always as if we rely on every other country or whatever. It's, it's always vice versa as well they rely on us just as much as we did sometimes and some cases they rely on us even more so yes. i'm fully on on your side on that in agreement i was hoping that we would get someone strong in power who would just say right that's it we're leaving just to call yes. them and just walk yeah. because the eu saw our weakness i think and just played yes, it. They, so yeah they got the upper hand in the end which um. is, which is, which is a massive shame but what other aspect of of brexit so obviously you've got fishing um the industry are there any other aspects of brexit that you're not happy with with that actual boris's deal well obviously i've been concentrating on fishing and it takes most yeah, of my day up. you know that's really tough northern ireland what the hell is that all about yeah i mean how the hell has that even happened yeah i mean come on i mean what what in your wildest dreams you can't even comprehend what is going on there so with the northern ireland fishing two huge things yeah. i mean you have to realize that we're an island mm. you know there's there's a hundred the coast there are so many deprived coastal towns and villages yeah where what well we could have rebuilt these 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 um areas yeah to, and to just stand back and not even consider when boris johnson and david frost didn't even consider that when they signed that over 40 yeah. years we waited jay 
Yeah. Ted Heath got us in, he took that, we've waited, we've done our time. Why yeah. should we why should we have been sacrificed once again? Yeah, yeah. We, you know, once you get the you know, I'd, I'd love to take some of these. I mean, there's 186 coastal MPs. They all, I think, bar two, all signed that deal. Yeah. I don't even think they read it, Jay. No. And no. even after, you know, that you'll get bars say, oh, yes, yes, but after four years, you know, we'll be taking this back. No. Yeah. After five years, we're still tied to aviation, we're still tied to energy, and we're still, still tied to tariffs. Yeah. It's absolutely terrible. And anyone who cares about this country and want to protect our ocean for the next generation, we well, forget about me, yeah. but what about the next generation? As, yeah. as, what would have happened if our forefathers all thought, well, now, now I'm going to go to war, let's just play this one out. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what yeah. we're actually doing. Yeah, and what, what's happening today on the news, I see? Food shortages. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're yeah. Gonna, we've got nothing to eat. Well, I'll tell you what we have got. If you'd have taken that lot back, we've got abundance of fish protein which is needed yeah and and to me that that's something even now i'm waiting for my phone to ring will george east used to give me a ring and say christ june you know we might need your help soon yeah, yeah. we might need to catch the fish because we've got like we need processors no yeah. what they'll do jay they'll wait to the 11th hour like they did with this brexit lot and and think oh now oh right what do we do now we have done it with energy and we're now doing it with food I mean, what is wrong with it? What is actually wrong with them? I had DEFRA. They came to Lowestoft this on Wednesday. They met, came down to the um, to see me and fishermen, yeah. DEFRA and the and MMO, which is marine management. And in the end, I had to ask a member of DEFRA to 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 get out, to just get out, get out of my sight. I couldn't even look at her, at her yeah. because she didn't. She didn't know what she was talking about. And these are the people that are, de- are going to decide our future. She didn't know what a flagship was. She didn't know, well, you know, if we have all this fish, we don't eat fish. And I said, look, can you just go? Yes. I said, I, I cannot it's believe you've fish. come to Lowestoft and told me I can't sell fish. Yeah, yeah. She said, That's you can't sell it. Of course I can sell fish. I can sell it back to the EU. Yeah. Um, and and yeah. You, you see, can you see how I'm talking to you and all of a sudden I get, because once I mention the word... I'm normally, yes, an, I'm normally like, an animated person as well. Oh, I'm, you're... You're I like, can't no. help it, Jay. I, 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 no, no, no. I get so damn passionate about the ignorance of that lot yeah. in Whitehall. They yeah. are absolutely, they have to go. And, and I try everything, you know, every day I think, now what can I do today? Well, I'll go on Twitter, and because the best people I've got are people like yourself, obviously, for allowing me to have a platform with you today. Mm. But the people that I really do take, hold close to my heart are, are the great British public. Yeah, yeah. Because they, they're, they're great. And yeah. they, they know, even some real hardcore Remainers, they know deep down that, that the, the fishing bit was wrong, it and the Northern great, Ireland, yeah. obviously. So I, I, I just wish that, I don't know, I just wish that someone would come along and just help me. And then I had a little glimmer of hope. Oh, in the Sun newspaper, we see Mr. Mark. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Write to me. So I've written to to Jacob Rees-Mogg. Yeah. I don't even. I haven't even had an acknowledgement. And I've sent them they, 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 they send these. You know, yeah, get in touch. That's we'll do it. And, and then their PA will send you a, a standard letter. Do you think that you know? So we, like I said before, during the the Leave campaign, and even right up until Brexit was delivered. Um, hmm. We were hammering home. The fishing industry, yourself and that were always in the paper. It was always on the media. It was a massive yeah. contention. Yeah. And then yeah. suddenly the deal was struck and it just went mm. silent. Everyone's being ignored. Like yourself, yeah. you know, you, um, the anger, any sort of criticism is being ignored. Do you think that is because, do you think the government aren't talking about it at all because they know that they've effed up, basically? You know, that they've completely totally. missed it. Totally. David Frost really has. I feel quite sorry for David Frost because I think the negotiating team that he took were useless. Yeah. yeah. yeah they were. They were diabolical. Mm-hmm. Boris doesn't know much about fish and neither did David Frost. You know, uh, I, I kind of get it. I just, he makes me cross now because he's obviously walked away from it. And now he's tweeting, you know, he's trying to jump on another bandwagon yeah. and this bandwagon. And I keep saying to him, hang on, can you please explain this? What? Why? Why yeah. did you do this? He knows, he knows in his, in, he knows deep down that he messed up badly with fishing. And they, and the Tories know in two years time, I'll damn well make sure that they, they lose some seats. And yeah. all we need, 
is, is a party that actually cares about coastal communities. And I can guarantee three seats. And yeah. I'll work my ass off to make sure we get those as well, Jay. And yeah. I mean that. There's we probably three. No, so all we need is a, is a few seats. I can always remember Nigel yeah. saying, you'll never change anything, June, unless you get yourself, it, not that I would stand, but, you know, some good people in, in, in three or four, well, we'll probably go, I think we should always hit the coastal communities. Yeah. I said that to the Brexit party and Ben Habib's always said to me, you were right. You know, it's 186 seats. Mm. You can, t we can easily take some of those. Yeah, of course. Um, and get some real good people into these deprived coastal areas and show them how it's done yeah. and do the right thing. But, you know, our, 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 you need people who do care. Because yeah. like I said earlier, there's people I thought, well, you did care about fishing, but now I think, well, you, you really didn't, did you? Yeah, no, some people just use You know, they used they they us. The golden bad. goose is not laying any more eggs for yeah. the tourists. Simple as that. They've used that. They've used fishing far too many times and they know that. So yeah. then you think, well, come on, Labour. They've been sniffing about a bit, but no. So it's, that will be down to um, the reform or the reclaim party to come along and work with me. And yeah. and and I will support them. Did you say you um, wouldn't stand though, Jim? Why why will you not stand? I don't know. Sometimes I think I can and I, I'd be able to do it. I don't know if I could. I mean, I'm good with the fish inside of it. I understand right from wrong. I can run a business. Um, but the, all the other crap that goes with it, I don't know if I could do it. I'd probably be kicked out within a week. I just can't stand <laughs> the, the bullshit push. with it all, Jay. I just can't, you know, I just can't bear it. It, it, yeah. it upsets me. You know, the, like I always say, the majority of people in this world, in life, you, you leave school, you get a job, you fall in love, mm. you get married, and all you want is to tip along a holiday yeah. year, have you own your own home yeah. um, bring up your children and have fun that's all you want yeah. but we they're, they're just taking that away from us all you know you take a coastal community now the the, the mother and the, the people who live there for years their children can't live nearby so yeah. that causes social problems so yeah. their so sons and daughters have to move out so because all the houses are being bought up by all these rich people who can afford to have big holiday homes. Yeah. So you then get your social problems. You can't look after mum and dad. Um, people can't get the work. So you get alcoholism, drug abuse, prostitution sometimes, you know, in some of these areas where there's no works whatsoever. They are the simple, basic things. And that is what politicians used to care about. Yeah. That was what it was. So if you go back to a lot of years, I'd have probably done it then. But now it's not about those fundamentals, just yeah. the normal things in life. It's all become, well, it's all become huge about about them yeah. and about well, what, not what can I do, yeah. what can I get? Yeah, that's true. That yeah, is what good. it's down to with yeah, these MPs. It's not what can I do and achieve. I'm not saying all MPs are like that because there are some good ones. Majority, but are. The majority, yeah. majority are, and 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 they've proved that. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. I I see the fishing industry when you're talking about you know towns and things becoming deprived. I think there's a correlation between. So my granddad was before he got into the RAF, he was a coal miner in Yorkshire, and whole towns and communities were focused around coal mining. They were built up, and like you say, that's what put the bread and butter on the table. That's what brought people together. When that was taken away, it devastated the whole community. So I can see that you know being the same with the fishing industry because it's mm. such a strong economy for them. But you're seeing people daily, um, you know, you, you see these families, you see these fishermen, how are they actually feeling on a personal level? Are, are, they, are they actually quite badly financially hit and how is it impacting them personally? Well, the fishermen I'm meeting with now have just had enough. I mean, there's so much red tape. In, in, in fact, people, all these conspiracy theories going on about COVID and, and all other yeah. things. And they're even thinking that now, you know, they're, they're even asking themselves, well, what the hell is this all about? You know, they've got the MCA, there's problems with that. You've got IFCA, you've got the MMO, all this red tape on a, on a fisherman who catches a few boxes of fish, yeah. um, where you've got big super trawlers coming in and the French coming in, taking what they like, hammering the ocean, not even, no one aboard their vessels. You know, yeah. we're now handing licenses out to the French. Well, a, a guy in the UK has to buy those. What the hell is that all about? Yeah, yeah, it, it makes absolutely it, 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 it makes no sense. And like you say, you, you look at mining and fishing. Well, that's like pole dark on steroids, isn't it? If you think <laughs> about it. I mean, that's what it was all about. 
it's, yeah, yeah. It, it, it is what it is what it is. Yeah, and that, yeah. when you say would well, I be an MP, yeah, well, I'd have to go right back to Pol Dark days yeah. to stand there. Or I watch Peaky Blinders. Maybe they're like, <laughs> you know, maybe I should be stand up. Then well, I would have been to, an We need MP. to build a time machine, June. Oh, yeah, I'll, but they've, they've, they've changed it, haven't they? I mean, you yeah. look in, you know, I mean, there was some lord the other day who fell asleep and then jumped up. Oh, 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 just I, I, the House of Lords, in my opinion, needs scrapping. I, I think they should be putting um, electric shock on on each seat so that you can just... zap, zap them awake every time they're not off. The problem that you've got with, that goes back to what you're saying, is people see what they can get, not what they can give. These lords get paid to clock in each time. They go in, they clock in. They sit down, they'll fall asleep. They're not interested in it in the debate, a lot of them. I know there are some good, decent baronesses, lords, etc. but a lot of them are just old fossils just clocking in for the, you know, so they've got the label and the title. I remember there was one peer who was caught, he literally was going in, clocking in so that he got his allowance and straight away just leaving the parliament, jumping on the train. We need to scrap that completely. What would oh, you... we do. But we have got Claire Fox in there now, and yeah. I think she'll change the dynamics. I, I was, I'll be honest. Oh yeah, give it, a, give it, a, give it a while, Claire. Yeah, yeah, or Claire or... See, I was critical of Claire at first, and to be fair, she's 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 actually doing. Oh, a good she's job. a woman, and she's, yeah. she's really good in that. She's she seems more down to earth, and which is what we need. Like like I said, she's not a cardboard like yourself, not a cardboard cutout politician. Mm, yeah, she's a good just, woman. You can tell that they're in it for the right reasons. Yes, I, I've always said we need Farage in the um, in the house. Definitely. Mm. Yeah. How, how did Farage, what were his thoughts about the fishing um, the, the, the deal? Yeah, I get asked this a lot. So when the deal was, you know, when the deal came out and I was devastated, yeah, I have spoke to Nigel. Um, Nigel's there if I need him. Um, you know, I could I, I can pick the phone up now if I had any trouble or I needed his support. Um, I don't, I, and I know Nigel deep down will fight with me on 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 the subject. I just hope that um, I'd love him to stand in a couple of years, give him that coastal yeah. seat I've got up my sleeve. Do it. Um, Do it. We need, we need to get him in. But of course, that's all you'd need. Can you imagine? Get yeah. if Nigel Farage could take a coastal seat. It'd be brilliant. It'd be, it? That would well. That would just said that would start it off. And you and yeah. you do you need people like that um, who who you know who who actually care. And he does care. I mean, obviously, and I get lots of the, the fear of God into the Tories. Yeah. Let's be honest. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Uh, it's the same with the whole with the Brexit party. That it gives it gave them a shape. It's the same with UKIP when Farage was leader. Yeah, uh, that, is, that pushed through. That's pretty much what forced the Tories to. David Cameron to give the referendum, a referendum they never thought they'd lose. Um, but obviously, luckily, the, the better side won. Um, what are your plans? So obviously, you're in the Reform Party now, aren't you? Um, I'm not in it. I know I'm, I'm not really with anybody at the are you moment. Not, you're not in it anymore. No, I'm edging my bets. I'm not going to, you know, I speak to them all and I, and I love, you know, the, the Brexit Party. I love them to death. I mean, we've got a bond that we'll always have. Um, I'm talking, I, I, I've got a lot of time for um, Lawrence Fox. Yeah, and he's been to Lowestoft and to see me and met with with the uh, fishermen. Nice um, I think he's coming back, Lawrence, and he's a good guy. You know, yeah. Richard Ties to speak with Richard. Yeah, I'd love them both to unite. I mean, that would be absolutely fantastic. Whether they will or not, I'm not quite sure. So at the moment, I'm kind of standing back and thinking, Just wait. because Jay, Jay, I, I I will work my ass off, like I said, for somebody that means it this time. Yeah. you know, I. Boris Johnson came to, stood in my office and spoke to me and said, June, we will, yes, we'll take it all back, June. We'll take this and that back and then we'll go. He lied, he lied, he lied to me. Yeah. And I will never, ever forgive him for that. Yeah. And my MP's the same. Um, I, I established, um, I was spear hunted by the ex-director of DEFRA about four years ago. Right. And we set up Reef, which is the Renaissance of East Anglian Fisheries. And I worked damn hard on that. I put a lot of my own money into it. Um, and that was basically, um, it was to rebuild. And yeah. I ended up writing most of it with a fisherman. Yeah. Uh, very Janet and John, Peter and Jane type of thing. But yeah. that is what fishing is. You yeah. go to sea, you catch it, you process it, you sell it, you eat it. Done. End of. Creating thousands of jobs. One job at sea, eight on land. Mm. Fact. Yeah. I wrote it. Um, we, um, I raised the money, 160 odd grand, got a lot of money from George Eustace, CFAS, and then we started Reef having meetings. Well, again, 
you know, I'm working with councillors, I'm working with my MP, and I am forceful. I like to get things done. Yeah. And um, after the after we left and we didn't take that full control, I made one mistake. I made uh, my MP was the chairman, and I let I wrote to him or left him a message and said, look, you know, when you come back to the first reef meeting, you have to come as an MP. Yeah. not as the chairman because I want to know why you voted for that deal and sold us out yeah. I got kicked out I've really? been thrown out I've no, been thrown really. out That's and I couldn't fight it well he's just come back and said oh well three months ago or three months ago I was I was rude to, to sea fast sea fish yeah I was I told her yeah. her campaign strategy was dreadful so you should, have, um, you should have just agreed, even if you didn't agree with it. Well, I just, and, and now, I, I, so that's all sort of, I don't know what's happened yeah, to Reef. So I've had, you know, I have been talking to, I have had a little bit of good news. The Shetland Islands got hold of me mm. and they're thinking about um, having an alliance with the Shetlands, Scots and the Irish yeah. and yeah. working with the East Coast here and some others in, the, in England as well and right. forming an, an alliance together. Because we've got no platform. Yeah, we're, we're not a union. You do need to do that. You definitely Yes, we, do. we definitely do. But that's because the majority of fishermen are probably talk, pushing towards retirement. Mm. So they're all, that, and they've asked these, you know, they've asked these questions a hundred times. They're fed up with it. They've, they've lost the faith. They've lost the will. Yeah. So, and we haven't got many younger, younger people. So I'm hoping that we can form something. So we have a platform. Yeah. Um, you know, just someone who can do the admin, We've got the expertise for free. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll give my, my advice and I've got lots of fishermen who will give expertise. I always go back to um, veterans as well, the older generation yeah, yeah, that yeah, are yeah. retired. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. You know, if I'm ever stuck on anything, Jay, I get hold of an old, you know, an old salty sea dog yeah. and they can put me in the right direction. I'm picturing a man yeah. with a wooden leg with a parrot on Yeah, parrot on <laughs> Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I am looking at that with them. Um, obviously, I'm talking to the reform reclaim, yeah. um, and look, and people like you. I mean, that's what I need. To I was going to say, this... if you need help at all, you just give me a shout. If there's anything yeah, yeah. you can do, if you think of something. But, mm. um... And the great British public. I mean, they are behind me, and you know, you, you're doing it for them. And and I, uh, if we don't, if we don't, we're going to lose those waters. They're going to be overfished. We're going to kill everything in there. There'll be nothing left for the next generation. Yeah. And that's really sad. How are we going to, how can, one last question before I let you go then. What, how yeah. can we turn it around? Obviously you've talked about um, getting active. We need to yeah. talk to you. What, so yep. a massive thing is sustainability. You know, like right, you said, we're being mm -hmm. we're completely over. Um, right. How can you change that? How can we change right. the decisions? Very simple. I've written the strategies. They're waiting here. There's lots of it for Mr. Mogg, if he ever gets back to me. You reinstate the Margaret Thatcher's 1988 Merchant Shipment Act. That's it. That's the first yeah. bit. 54% of the UK quota, Jay, yeah. is on flagships. So a flagship is um, registered in the UK, but owned by the Dutch. Yeah. Well, we want that. They don't pay anything into the Treasury. So they come in our waters. They catch all our fish. They land maybe here, there'll be a couple of lorries, they put the fish on the back and it goes back over to the Other EU. Yeah. Right, if they're not domicile in this country, then they'll have to go. And yeah. people say, well, people bought quota. No, quota's not owned, it's people have the entitlement. Yeah. You can pay, it's no different to the milk quota, you can take it back. Yeah. Uh, people who have bought quota that have fish and boats and, and, and work them, fair enough. But these slippers skippers, so that's, that's the start, reinstate the Merchant Shipping Act. I've been banging on about it since we left. We can do that. Because how can we ever be an independent coastal state when we're not in control of our own waters? Yeah, exactly. So that's the first thing. And then you gradually, um, if they, if, if, or once they, or they have to, the economic link is a big deal. So in the economic link, what they've written in so far is that they'll have to land their fish here, these flagships. Well, hang on a minute. They already do. They land the fish and shove it in a lorry. No, they have to land it process it and sell it in this country yeah. you start bringing up you can start rebuilding it's so simple to do but i truly believe that defra haven't got they, they haven't got a clue yeah because they came to lower stop on wednesday and asked me what do we do you said, yeah, I, mean, I mean you said you was going to see them i didn't think that you would think that they would get people like you with with experience in the industry who actually yeah. 
who know what they're doing, know what they're talking about. Not they seem to just, these these organisations. Well, that's too easy. That's too easy, Jay. That that they, they love to complicate everything. Yeah, everything yeah. they do is complicated, isn't it? Yeah. And we give it, and we're just giving every single thing away. Yeah. Um, and that that makes me cross about uh, our prime minister because he bangs on about green. Well, yeah. does what does he have any idea what's happening in our, in our ocean? Yeah, that's exactly. been absolutely wiped out. Yeah. But oh no, no, we need those wind milk, June. We need to suck on that wind milk. Yeah. And that is how he, he operates. You yeah. know, wind farms, um, fish, we both harvest from the ocean, both very important. Mm. But let's control it ourselves. It's ours. Let us be, build wind farms in our ocean. Yeah. You know, so why would you want Spanish and, and, and Dutch companies doing all this work? Yeah. We wear the crown, Jay, but yeah. we throw the rubies and the emeralds and diamonds yeah. over the water. Well, we're look, we, 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 even our passports, when we were, yeah, we're going to get these, our own passports back, Blue, but we're going to get them made in France. Okay, fuck. I mean, what? <laughs> what? what? Like, yeah, what the, the, whole, the whole point of Brexit, of what we campaigned for, wasn't it? It yeah. was all for making it an independent country again, making us proud to be a nation, but also making our own country, you know, buying British, um, in, re, re Rejuvenating our fishing industry, all of these different industries that have been left alone um, and, and been, you know, neglected. But I agree. It's, you know, when you look at it in that way, Bre uh, the Brexit deal that was negotiated doesn't seem to have doesn't seem to have worked. It's, it, it feels horrible to say. I, I'm still proud and glad that we we voted for yes and, and campaigned yeah. through. But I, I definitely agree. That there's more work that needs to be done. And let, let's be honest. It's not. Although it's a done deal now. Things can change in the future. We can still make these amendments, but it takes people like you, doesn't it, and and other people to get off their asses, so to speak, and and join mm -hmm. you and then get involved. But yeah, no, listen, Judy, it's been lovely to speak. If if if, if, you, you, if I can help you in any way, we'll. That's, um, that's hard of you. Thank you very much. We'll take them on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Lovely. Thank um, you so much. Yeah, it's great. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Bye, Jay.